Hello, and welcome to DeviantArt Critique. Today, I'll be doing something different from what I usually do. This is the 6-in-1 special. Alright, for this episode of DeviantArt Critique, I have selected six users who I will review in a random order. This wheel will choose who I will review. Now let's spin it. Arte Misere is an American artist who has been on the site for 10 years. He has a following of 124 watchers and has published over a thousand deviations. A quick look at his gallery shows that Arte Misere specializes in the abstract, and sometimes scary, realm of art. While he does make the usual non-objective stuff that abstract art is mainly known for, my favorite types of pieces from him are those that show at least some concrete object in an abstract light. The combination of the expressive nature of abstract art and symbolism is quite a good one, since the various symbols used in that type of artwork can help the viewer get a good idea of what the art is supposed to be communicating. After all, abstract art is less about aesthetically pleasing work and more about raw, unbridled emotion. Clearly, Arte Misere excels in communicating such feelings as sheer fucking terror in his work, since a lot of his art is of these scary faces. Aside from his more abstract work, Arte Misere has, on occasion, painted something from reality, such as this house, which was made using this photo as a reference. One thing to note about his work is that he almost always makes multiple versions of a single piece, this house included. My guess as to why he does this is to paint whatever he's made in a different emotional light, which is quite interesting. All in all, Arte Misere is a good example of an abstract artist who calls the site of DeviantArt home. Alright, let's select our next subject! Blue Box 360 also comes from the United States, and has been on the site for six years. He has a fan base of 172 watchers, and has published 233 deviations. Blue Box 360 is similar to Peru Brad in that he's not only into feet and footwear, but also draws his characters in situations that accentuate the fetish. This is a ubiquitous theme found across his entire gallery. That aside, he has a decent anime-like style, albeit one that's quite flawed. His anatomy, for example, can be quite off at times, especially when he draws more dynamic sorts of poses. Blue Box also has some issues with anatomy when it comes to perspective. This piece, for example, has quite a lot of them. The legs of both of the girls look either too short, in the case of the one in black, or too long, in the case of the one in pink. That is the result of not keeping in mind the linear perspective of the sidewalk in the background. The foot of the girl in black is also mounted on the ankle at an impossible angle. Said foot also has an over-exaggerated arch. That piece was just one example of many in the flawed anatomy department, and I could go on about this for a while. Another, small criticism I have of his work is how he uploads it. Like many others, he uses a digital camera in order to take pictures of his art to post on DeviantArt. A better alternative to this would be to use a scanner, just like one on a printer. In a nutshell, Blue Box 360 is a decent foot and footwear fetishist that has a lot of room for improvement. My final recommendations to him are the following. Firstly, practice anatomy, preferably using reference images. Secondly, try using a scanner to upload work. And finally, put fetishy stuff under a mature content filter. Alright, let's select our next subject. John Wee, once again, comes from the good ol' USA 
and has been on the site for 12 years. He has a fan base of over a thousand watchers and has published over 13,000 deviations. All of his work, however, is of subpar quality. Literally, the only thing that he does is draw inflation, blueberry inflation, or fat fetish art using MS Paint, with the occasional miscellaneous piece every once in a while. The problems with his work are obvious to see. His anatomy boils down to essentially just turning people into circles, and basic amateur MS Paint people pushing said spheres around. It is the quintessential lazy man's art. I don't really have anything else to say other than that, so here are my final recommendations. Firstly, practice drawing in a program other than MS Paint. Fire Alpaca is a good alternative that you can use. I am certain that there are a lot of tutorials out there on the internet, so use them in order to practice and hone your drawing skill. Secondly, practice anatomy, preferably using reference images. Thirdly, try putting your characters into an environment. Backgrounds fill up the gaps with an environment that grounds the viewer into an artwork. Drawing a background that isn't just a nameless void of color, or whiteness, is a great idea that you should try out. And finally, put fetishy stuff under a mature content filter. Let's select our next subject. Storm Angel Arts comes from South Africa, and has only been on DeviantArt for just two months. She has a minuscule following of five watchers, and a small gallery of just 14 deviations on the site. Her gallery shows a lot of promise, however. She not only has an excellent style, but also draws quite fun subjects in her work. Storm Angel Art blends in the surreal and real quite seamlessly. She has a small series of works under the banner of the Bad Trip in her gallery, which is pretty interesting so far. However, upon further digging, it seems as if she's moved on from DeviantArt and instead prefers uploading on Instagram, where she has been slowly growing her gallery. I can't say much else other than that, but I encourage her to continue drawing and see where that takes her, no matter where she posts. Like I said earlier, she has a lot of potential. All in all, Storm Angel Art is a budding artist that has the elements of greatness in her work. Let's spin our wheel one last time in order to determine who I will review. Harroward comes from the United Kingdom, and has been on the site for 15 years. He has over 100 watchers, and has published 370 deviations. Right out of the gate, one can notice that Harroward is a big fan of the magical girl anime Cardcaptor Sakura. One can also immediately take note of the fact that he's a macrophile. His art consists of mainly poorly photoshopped collages of gigantified, or shrunken, characters from the anime, although he has done the same with characters from other media as well. These collages are so poorly made that Harroward forgets that selections and layer masks are a thing on occasion. There's also the fact that he puts in buildings literally made in MS Paint in his work. The other main criticism I have of his work is that he puts underage characters in fetishy contexts. For example, there's the time that he made a two-part series of collages with an added story revolving around the plot of Sakura, the main character from the anime, having a ring with a microscopic hotel on it for whatever reason. There's also another series he did where Tomoyo, Sakura's friend, goes through the process of apotheosis, ascending to such a level where she dwarfs the entire Milky Way galaxy. Now, I understand that these characters are fictional, but the fact that Harroward puts them in such contexts is still creepy. I would recommend that he collage some other characters instead. In conclusion, 
Harroward is a curiosity who produces amateur collages of Cardcaptor Sakura characters in macrophilic situations. My final recommendations to him are as follows. Firstly, learn how to use the software that you use properly, especially regarding layer masks and transparency. Secondly, stop making macro art using underaged characters. And lastly, put fetishy stuff under a richer content filter. Now then, let's move on to our final subject for this video. Nakomi 4 hails from the land of Japan and has been on DeviantArt for 10 years. They have a following of 624 watchers and a gallery with 474 deviations. Nakomi 4 clearly has a lot of enthusiasm for diving gear and spacesuits. Their gallery is full of pictures revolving around them. Their style is quite alright in my opinion. They do have a good handle on how rubber is shaded, and their coloring is decent. However, I feel that they could do some things better. Their anatomy, for instance, does have occasional issues, and while their coloring is decent, it still feels a bit flat. Practicing drawing textures of objects that are made of stuff other than rubber could help solve this problem. Also, while they do put in backgrounds depicting actual environments in some of their work, the background in other works is either a nameless bluish void or a boring wall some distance away from the subject. Practicing drawing more elaborate backgrounds could help make them more interesting to look at. Also, they draw artwork involving characters such as these. Again, these types of characters shouldn't be fetishized at all. I will say that their gallery does have some amount of variation, though I would like to see more of that. Like I've said previously with Jim Leisman and Marino Gairi, the underwater setting has a lot of potential, and the same can be said for outer space as well. To conclude, Nakomi 4 is another diving suit slash spacesuit enthusiast who suffers from similar problems that other people from the same community I've reviewed have. My final recommendations to them are as follows. Firstly, practice drawing textures and shading. Secondly, practice drawing more interesting backgrounds. Thirdly, practice anatomy a bit more. Fourth, stop making fetish art using underage characters. And finally, put fetishy stuff under a mature content filter. And that's the end of the six in one special. You can check me out on twitter.com if you want to, but otherwise I've been your host, xenonquirk996. I want to make a special announcement, however. I have one final episode planned for this series, and if everything goes well, it will be uploaded at the beginning of May. I'll see you then.